So when it comes to big red veterans, no one should actually stand out more than the Red Hulk. One of the Hulk's OG and probably one of his best enemies. Dude had an introduction in comics that would shame even Doomsday. But then again, we also got one of the original Autobots from the G1 days. One of the fan favorites. Ironhide. Y'all might be surprised about the scaling here today. Mm -hmm. But today we're going to see if everyone's red, crimson Autobot can beat one of the Hulk's toughest enemies. Now, this is going to be pretty simple since the Red Hulk we're going to be using is, well, Red Hulk when it was back then here. Because seeing the sheer fact that Red Hulk isn't really around currently. His current days are kind of a mystery. So we really don't see him in comics anymore. So with that being said here, we'll be using his feats of strength, durability, speed, and obviously his gamma radiation here, which, believe it or not, actually makes this one of the more simpler videos I've actually done in this channel, which I do love here. Because again, you guys know me by now here, I do, while I do like, you know, some of the more complex characters with all these hacks and abilities, I have a real soft spot for characters that can just slug it out and just, uh, you know, take a beating but they can just give it right back with no issue here you know simple brute force type of characters you know so with that being said here let's begin i think i've you know yampered on long enough and let's keep this sweet and simple as always red hulk is easily universal no if and a bunch about it he scales to thor back in the day not currently because thor right now is the embodiment of the wheel he's far too broken broke a soul of the justice league if he wanted to anyway so, with that being said here, with Thor being able to not only smack around Red Hulk here, but Red Hulk being able to give it back, he's also been able to consistently contend with the Hulk on multiple occasions here, and being able to punch around characters like Sentry, Wonder Man, and Ares. So, with that being said here, why does that make him out of Versal Legendary? What have they done? You already guys know I'm going to give y'all the feats anyway. So, with that being said here, what has Hulk done over the years? Well, considering Red Hulk actually scales more to a Savage Hulk and... I guess you could say a semi-banner intelligent Hulk here, like Professor Hulk, if you will, or that kind of in-between state where Hulk is, like, smart, but he can still lose his mind if he wants to. It's like that little in-between state where he's not fully Professor Hulk, but he's still intelligent enough, you know? So, with that being said here, Hulk has been able to destroy... Nightcrawler's Realm, which neighbors Dormammu's or Shumagoras, whichever one it is here. And keep in mind, Nightcrawler is someone who could bully characters that were bullying classic Doctor Strange, someone who's threw hands with Dormammu, whose fist fought eternity. Anyway, then we have the sheer fact that Hulk's destroyed Nightmare's Realm, the concept of imagination. Then he's also shook the entire Marvel multiverse, which is infinite in size, filled with quantum realms and platonic concepts. You guys already know how this is here. Then we have Thor. Thor, even as a, you know, teenager himself, and by the virtue of his godhood, transcends dimensions, which is already out of Russell by itself here. But here's the thing, right? Thor is actually able to contend with beings who have Odin's power. You know, his dad, someone that's actually been able to, you know, shake the entire Marvel multiverse. Mm-hmm. Uh, in battles with against Skyfather level being someone who's been able to push back Celestials and and been able to harm these kind of characters here speaking of which Thor has also been able to harm Celestials as well and as a baby when he cried he shook the very foundations of Idrisil a well a tree that contains multiple universes multiple infinite dimensions all on a quantum level. And keep in mind, again, this is an autoversal feat, considering how far Idrisil actually goes here. Yes, there are more details to it, like it holds the power of the 8th Cosmos, which is actually beyond the Marvel um, 616 multiverse, and the power of love and stuff like that from the 8th Cosmos, mind you, a minor concept from the 8th Cosmos, I should say here, is able to one-shot beings with the power of Lifebringer Galactus. So yeah, Thor is a very complex being, you know, he, he it's one of the few reasons we love him. You find more about him as you go mm -hmm. on. So with that being said here, 
Thor and Sentry also scale to each other. With that being said, um, I think Red Hulk's pretty much covered here. He is an experienced military veteran, and he does have some militaristic hand-to-hand -hand fighting capabilities. Also, unlike the Hulk, his healing factor is a lot slower, where Wolverine was able to cut out his eyes, and, well, he was blinded for a good minute until he got him back the next issue. Yeah, that's not... That, that's not looking good here as well. Plus, the matter that he gets, the hotter he gets. However, it also burns through his stamina. So, that being said here, Red Hulk should be done. Let's talk about Ironhide. Now, Ironhide, believe it or not, is confirmed to be one of the physically strongest Cybertronians here. Keep in mind, this is minus Optimus, Grimlock, and maybe even Brawn. Depending on how you look at it, considering Braun is confirmed to be the second strongest Cybertronian on Earth. Ironhide has done some incredible feats over here. For starters, he was able to crack Devastator's visor. Uh-huh. This is important because Devastator not only... Well, this is a Prowl-infused Devastator. Let me get that. So, this Prowl-infused Devastator was able to not only crater Galvatron and manhandle him, but casually took a blast to the face by him, which did nothing. And keep in mind, this was already a damaged Ironhide who had just got done fighting against and recruiting the Dinobots, minus Grimlock here. And this would also scale him, at least in the ranges to where he should be able to damage Galvatron, considering Galvatron has been able to backhand and overpower someone like Optimus Prime quite casually. And Optimus has been able to not only go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but has been able to tear apart Devoid. Or, again, excuse me, a Nova Prime amped with Devoid here. With the same Devoid having the full control over the Dead Multiverse. Okay? The Dead Multiverse is actually just as big as the IDW Multiverse, with it also having its many pocket realities mm -hmm. that were absorbed into the void here and the void was going to destroy the idw multiverse mind you by him simply entering it and just consuming it like like it was a cookie so optimus not only being able to battle against someone who was amped up by that power but being able to well um you know contend to it contend with it on multiple occasions in all honesty Considering the fact that the Dead Universe was also part of Shockwave's plan here. And, well, Optimus was able to withstand that. So, this would then go back to Ironhide, who's able to fight against beings who can harm Galvatron. And, believe it or not, keep in mind, Galvatron, with the Heart of Darkness, fought the Void with the Dead Universe to a stalemate. Kinda. Sorta. It, 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 he ended up becoming a Herald of the Void anyway, but it is what it is here. So... We then have to talk about the fact that Ironhide would scale above a lot of the other Autobots. This includes the GOATs, Sideswipe, and Sunstreaker. Sideswipe himself mm -hmm. is able to not only harm and send Galvatron flying, but, and I have to emphasize this again, but he almost killed him. Mm -hmm. Almost. All most. Okay? So, with that being said here, Ironhide scaling above that mm -hmm. and scaling above, you know, um, Sideswipe, scaling relative, if not, he's one of the few Autobots that should be able to not only harm Galvatron, but damage him, and in mm -hmm. Sideswipe's case, almost killed him, okay? So, with that being said here, all right, we then have the sheer fact that Ironhide was also able to put hands on someone like a pre, pre Heart of Darkness amped Nova Prime and was actually harming him. Keep in mind again, Nova Prime was able to blast Optimus Prime with a powerful energy blast that brought Prime to his knees. And this was not the Heart of Darkness. This was a casual energy blast that he normally emits. And yet Ironhide is putting hands all over this dude. Now, as for skill, Ironhide is a very experienced war veteran, actually being skilled in the art of diffusion, which is something most Cybertronians do have to learn in order to be able to fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat situations. Ironhide is able to use Diffusion and actually be able to take on and being able to hold his own against the 
Dinobots. Keep in mind, this is again minus Grimlock here because he was with the Lost Light at the time. Or sorry, not the Lost Light, the uh, Scavengers, excuse me. So, with that being said here, Ironhide being able to fight against four. Four combiner level opponents and still hold his own. Oh, and then he went to go and, you know, crack Devastator's visor after he took damage from them, mind you, not, not even getting any real chance to prepare himself. So, with that being said here, Ironhide is easily outer, pretty easily. So, yeah. Bet y'all didn't think Ironhide was that tough, huh? Yeah, I know. We People always underestimate Transformers like that. It's absolutely crazy, ain't it? But anyway, let's talk about it. Who wins? What are the advantages each one has here? Well, believe it or not here, Red Hulk advantage, or excuse me, Red Hulk's advantage, excuse me, <clears throat> is that the matter he gets, the hotter he gets, and he's able to make radiation explosions here. So you might say, oh, okay, so he'll just get hot enough to where he could simply um, be Ironhide, right? Nope. Because here's the thing, right? Ironhide's body, or at least what he has on his body, makes him immune or at least very resistant to radioactive explosions, if not radiation in general. Meaning that Ironhide not only could withstand being in the presence of Red Hulk, he can actually withstand Red Hulk's inferno, or I guess you could say thermonuclear radiation, if you will. And here's the thing, right? I actually do see Ironhide winning on for multiple reasons. Number one is stamina and endurance red hulk believe it or not doesn't have the best endurance when he can't finish an opponent quickly if the fight drags out too long mm -hmm. then he starts to wear down a lot quicker because this gets him angry and that builds up that heat and then slowly but surely he'll lose stamina and that'll just pretty much give them the win or give his opponents the opportunity to knock him out or follow up with some more devastating attacks Keep in mind, this is how a Savage Hulk beat him. He lost in his second round against the Hulk because Hulk outsmarted him. A Savage Hulk, mind you. And the funny thing about it is here, this has always been one of his worst qualities. He has so much. He, he can dish out the damage. He can take it. But he can't last long when it comes to these heavier confrontations here. When Colossus not, or Juggernaut, or Colossus with Juggernaut's powers, excuse me, was able to not hold back anymore, he overwhelmed Red Hulk in just a few blows. And Red Hulk was pretty much almost done after that here. Let's not forget the skill factor. Once Hulk actually learned how to do martial arts from Iron Fist here, he then... Uh, proceed to use that on Red Hulk and actually gain the upper hand on him and wind it up winning. With Ironhide being a, well, I wouldn't say a well-known martial artist, but is very much so that he does have the form of diffusion, which is a hand-to-hand -hand fighting technique that all Cybertronians have to learn here. The others like Metallico and Pit Fighting are more, whatchamacallit, I guess are more specific, um, taste if you will like you want to learn a martial arts but yeah you want to learn a specific form of martial arts you get me so with that being said here because Ironhide not only has better stamina and I'll also say he's a much more intelligent fighter than the Red Hulk I do think he beats the Red Hulk at the end of the day peace